Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock, Bible journaler here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be doing this passage in Nehemiah 8. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. And I'm going to be journaling that. I'll tell you a little more about why as we go. But first, I wanted to block off the passage. And what I did was take the washi tape and just run my fingers along the back of it a bunch so that it doesn't stick too heavily to my page, since I'm going to be pulling that back off. In the end of it, I decided to paint over that area anyway. So yeah, I do a lot of things for nothing sometimes. But in this passage, Nehemiah is telling the people about God's word and they were frightened of it at first. They were frightened about what was being said. And he was telling them in this passage, no, don't be scared. Celebrate because it's the word of God. Celebrate because you understand it now. And they did. And for me, Bible journaling has helped me to understand the word of God better. And that's what I'm celebrating. I wanted to do something about joy and the, the joy of understanding his word. And when I saw this passage, I just went, yeah, that's me. That's totally me. I'm celebrating because I finally get it. After so many years of being a scriptural dunce, just engaging with the word in images has really helped to, to wake my brain up. So I'm trying to create something very artsy here. I wanted to go for just splashy and wild and colorful. So I painted that center of a flower first with some uh, orangey color around the outside edges of it, a little yellow in the middle. I'll add more to it as I go. And then I'm gonna mix a purple with a little bit of blue because I wanted that kind of, a, a different kind of color rather than the straight purple that was in my palette. And then I'm gonna start a little bit on my flower and just start to put down the first initial bits of it. So made a big V at the bottom of my oval and had some little things hanging down from it and then my whole stem. So that's just gonna set it in place to begin with. Add a little bit of pink to it and then start to do flicky types of brush strokes out from it. And the flower is gonna be, we're kind of looking at it from the side. So I am gonna have some of these parts that I just painted in the front. They're gonna be in front of that yellow center, but I'm gonna have to do some more work to make that work right. Uh, a lot of times we end up doing a flower with the backside, even with the front side and everything. But if you put more emphasis on the backside and having taller types of petals on the backside, and then the ones in the foreground are in front of that little oval thing, it's going to make your flower look like it's on its side. But I'm going to kind of work on that, that flower a little bit more to try to add more interest to that center before I start putting really rich dark color in front of it. So I'm mixing all kinds of browns and reds and stuff. You can get all kinds of crazy with whatever colors to create that center. And as I go, I kind of take some off, I put some back on, and I decided it was just too wet. So I put my piece of paper over top of it and then ironed it so that it'll get a little flatter because I was having trouble with just too much moisture on there. And that happens once in a while, I get a little too crazy. So now I'm using a little thicker paint to add just with the tip of my brush almost almost dotting with some of the darker colors and I'm going to even add a little bit of a brown an actual sepia brown in there and the thicker the paint is the more it's going to stay in place it's not going to get all washy and go all over the place so while that's drying I'm going to add some green to my stem and I mixed up some just green with the purple so that it doesn't have to be just green colored Notice that I had the purple down there for the stem already. I just wanted it to be kind of related colors to each other. And then I'm using a little bit of the paint that's on my brush to just add some splashy parts in the background to soften out the stem so it's not gonna be all, you know, a perfect single line because I want it to feel washy. I'm not good enough yet to just make it washy. I have to make it feel washy. And these are little tricks that I've learned over time to make it feel that way. So there you go. So now I'm gonna mix up more purple and green together because I want a really rich dark color at the base of my flower. And the more pigment, again, the more pigment, less water, the darker I can get that color at the start here. And I'm gonna let some really lacy little bits hang down, just not too far, and then start kind of working my way around the, the stem itself, carrying just kind of in a, sketchy way down the stem, not a whole ton of it, 
Uh, you can add some water to it then. I'm going to rinse out my brush and just kind of let the colors blend together and soften a little bit because I don't want it to be too harsh. And then start to add more to my flower itself with more of the dark color toward the center and lighter color out toward the outside edges. But, you know, kind of playing around with how much purple and how much green in there together. But I want, now that the center yellow is dry, I can go over top of it with those, those little petals and now they stay put before they just blend it in. If you have too much moisture on there, it's just gonna keep blending in and blending in and blending in. So you may need to iron it and dry it first or let it air dry. So now I'll put really dark color right around the, the center of the flower, that backside of the, the petals, and then using kind of a damp brush to pull that color upward. So I'm not painting it necessarily as much as pulling the color from the center of the flower. And then I'm gonna let it get washy out toward the outside edge. So you can see there's some places where it gets really light. That's where I'm laying my brush down and letting just a little bit of water move that color and just letting a little bit of that move around. Then I'll add just a little splash of the pink in there. Let it kind of bleed through the colors and work its way through a little bit just to add some life to it. A little bit more down the stem and then mix up a little bit then with the purple. You can decide how far you wanna go with any of these and whether you wanna add more than one flower, just one flower, whatever, whatever works for you. But then I decided, okay, now I need some, some more splashes on here. And yeah, my whole desk was covered with splashes by the time I was done. And I got tired of my splashes not working, so I just painted some on there and just painted some splooges and you can paint them yourself that way. Just let the brush kind of dance across and then I'll use my baby wipe to lift up a little bit and kind of soften them because I don't want them to be too obviously giant and dark either. So next up I was going to try to see if I could fix that one area but it's still too wet so I kept trying to fix that one red spot on my flower center and had to finally give up on that. But then I went in and added another, just a corner of a flower sticking in. I didn't want another whole flower because I, I really liked where this one was going. So I'm adding really light pigment around the very outside edges so I get just the, the tip of it and then just a little darker color so that you get the idea that there's another flower over there without having to paint the whole thing. And I do like having something from my Bible journaling page spill off the side. It just makes it feel like it's bigger and, and broader. So here we go, revealing the text. And you can see I'm pulling it off sideways so I don't rip it. I'll iron the whole thing and then uh, finish up here a little bit more with the rest of the page. And I really loved how this came out. I really, really did. It just came out so pretty. Beautiful washy flower, even though you got to see the secret of how hard it was to paint that and make it get washy. But for me, um, the whole idea, our, our theme for the month of May is new things and celebrating the new things that God's doing in our lives. And for me, Bible journaling has been the big new thing. It's been the thing that he's taught me is that, yeah, I do understand the scriptures now. I don't understand all of them, but boy, I understand more of it than I ever did before now that I've been doing Bible journaling. And so that's what this page is all about in our theme of new for the month of May. And if you'd like to do some, uh, some, pages about newness, then please do join us in May 2018 on our Facebook page. And the link is going to be in the description as well. So you can go see what everybody else is creating. But I love learning what everybody else is learning from the Lord too. So that was, that's something I've been really enjoying. So I did decide to add the yellow to it because I didn't have enough pigment on the rest of the page to make the passage jump out. I thought I was going to go wilder and artsier. So I did end up adding just a little bit of that yellow onto the passage to highlight it. And there we go, all done for this week. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll try a crazy washy flower like this at some point on a page all about joy. And I will see you hopefully over in the Facebook group or else I'll meet you back here next week for your regular Sunday video. Have a really wonderful week and God bless you. I'll see you later.